Well, the president signed an executive action continuing the suspension of student loan payments until the end of the year. So for more on this, we're joined now by Ashley Harrington, Federal Advocacy Director and Senior Counsel at the Center for Responsible Lending. So Ashley, the president put a pause on student loan payments um, that was originally introduced under the CARES Act. This means that 35 million uh, people with federal student loans are not going to have to resume their payments until January of 2021. Is this a, a win or, or not? So it's definitely helpful, but we actually still have a lot of questions about it, Kristen. Um, so we know that the executive order directs the secretary, secretary to extend the suspension through the end of the year. However, back in March, before CARES was enacted, uh, when the president also issued an executive order uh, to suspend payments, borrowers had to actually opt in. It wasn't an automatic suspension as it is under CARES. So it's unclear whether this is gonna be opt in, opt out. Um, there's also the issue of it doesn't do it doesn't speak to defaulted borrowers directly um, who have experienced a, a, a halt on involuntary collections under care. So we're in a situation where come October 1st, all the folks who are in default and struggling before the crisis who are still struggling and struggling much more now are going to be subject to wage garnishments and everything else starting October 1st. Um, and it, it still leaves out the nine million borrowers who don't have who have department guaranteed loans, but not held loans, the Fell borrowers and the Perkins borrowers who are not actually owned by the department, who have loans not owned by the department. And there's the worry that under CARES, our payments count, pay, the suspension of payments, even during those months, counted towards IBR and PSLF. However, the executive order doesn't mention that, doesn't mention the PSLF program. So we're looking at where teachers who will if they have the department held loans, could have their loan payments still suspended, but it wouldn't count towards PSLF, the frontline workers who may have been counting it towards PSLF. So there's just a lot of open questions that we definitely need more direction from the department on. So to that end, when you have open questions, who is the one that comes up with the answers? You didn't get any of those from the president. Is it just the Department of Education that says, oh, okay, we have this executive order? let's just try to figure it out and, and perhaps use the CARES Act as a template or a guide. I mean, so right now it almost seems like we have no idea what's going to be happening uh, come October, at least when it comes to, their, to our student loans and those payments. Absolutely. We definitely need the Department of Education to say something. And, I'm, and that's not just borrowers. Servicers need that help as well. They are also confused by what's going on. And so we need directions for everyone involved. But really, Kristen, what we need is, uh, you know, our lawmakers to get back to the table and create a comprehensive relief package that does include student debt relief for all borrowers. You know, the House pact passed Heroes back in May. It had um, the continuation of suspension of payments all the way through September 2021. It covered the left out borrowers, the fell borrowers and Perkins borrowers who weren't included. It even had debt relief for uh, private student loan borrowers. And it had $10,000 of cash of cancellation for some borrowers. So there was a lot more in there and, and it just gave folks a lot more clarity. They knew what to expect borrowers and services are like. So we need the department to give more guidance, but we also need congressional action on student debt and other issues that are facing families and consumers during this crisis. So currently the student uh, loan debt crisis is up over one and a half trillion. I believe it was 1.6 trillion last time I checked. 1.7 now. Oh, one, okay, well that's even worse. 1.7 trillion right now. Without any form of specific legislation, um, how do you think this is going to impact that? I, I think that, I think we're seeing We've already been seeing student debt go. It's only going to get worse because we are in such a precarious situation economically. So many borrowers were already struggling pre-crisis. Before we even got here, two in five borrowers were in default or seriously delinquent. And it was worse for black and brown borrowers. And the, and the economy hasn't gotten better. We don't know when it might get better. Folks are still facing long-term unemployment. There are wages that will never be made up. We're also facing a massive rental housing crisis and these are going to be there's going to be so much overlap between these populations. So I don't think this is going to get better unless we take bold steps, including actual debt cancellation. Balances have to come down. If we leave this crisis and the, and we're still at one point seven trillion for 45 million borrowers, that is a serious drain, not just on their resources, but the entire economy. So to that end, I also want to ask you, as you mentioned, rentals. 
Um, there had obviously been a moratorium on evictions that, of course, expired when the CARES Act expired. Are you concerned about a rising number of folks that are going to be left homeless going forward? Yeah, we're we're 30 to 40 million folks are looking at um, uh, looking at uh, losing their housing. That's that's a concern for for all of us. Um, we're talking about right now twenty five billion dollars in back owed rent that will get that is a, set to approach seventy billion dollars by the end of the year. And this is again when we still have high unemployment, wages are never going to be uh, regained. This is a major problem, and so we're going to have a homelessness crisis in the midst of a public health and economic crisis. And that just and all of these uh, issues are going to compound on each other. So that's why we really need Congress to step up. Um, and when you look at the president's executive order on rent on the rental crisis, it actually really does nothing. It just directs HUD to, you know, look for money. Basically, you know, look under the couch cushion, see if you can find some extra money and then think about how we could use it. Not even then once you find it, use it. Just, you know, think about it, figure out something. And so that's no that's no help or relief for those 30 or 40 million people who are facing literal homelessness, literally losing their home. Um, in the face of a, in, in this crazy, uh, uh, during this time of, of public health issues, economic issues, everything like that. All right. Well, we will have to leave that there. Ashley Harrington, Federal Advocacy Director and Senior Counsel at the Center for Responsible Lending. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much.